Thank you, Shannon. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining Jim and I this afternoon. We're excited to share our story about the various and elegant ways our customers have solved challenging problems using the clever desktop device we call a client queue. You can uh, look at this picture, which some of you have seen, um, and it humorously depicts the problem, one of the problems that we solve with the client queue. We find increasingly more and more of our customers needing more and more networks and PCs at their desktop. So distributed PC hardware is costly to service and creates a space-consuming, unfriendly work environment for sure. Even more importantly, from a vulnerability perspective, distributing local data puts organizations at a security risk of lost or stolen data, both at rest and on the move. So just like this guy in the picture, when we showed our customers how we could help them, they too got very big smiles on their face. But before we get to the joy they feel after solving their problems, let's talk about some of the challenges that I'm sure uh, you and a number of your uh, comrades have as well. Just how big is this challenge? Is it a baby problem or is it a monstrous, ginormous opportunity? We'd like to put it in context by showing you a couple of uh, real life situations. Uh, this is a pretty common picture of a guy in the Combined Air Operations Center workstation. Let's see what this guy has to work with. He's got two PCs to his left. He's got two PCs under him to his right. He's got uh, an analog phone. He's got a VoIP phone. He's got another VoIP phone, and he's got a phone in his hand. Plus, he's got three, four networks, a red, red network, green network, blue network, and white network, and we're pretty sure that means he's got classified and unclassified data coming to that desktop. Take one more look. We've got another Joint Air Ops Command weapon system, and this uh, Air Corpsman here is at about a six-foot table, and she's got seven PCs around her. And this is the uh, sort of modern warfare crow's nest. Um, it looks like a pretty big challenge for a 10 to 20 workstation watch floor, right? I guess they can accept the risks of distributed data and support when there are only 10 to 20 workstations, but when you look at the larger picture. So think about the poor IT support person that has to open up all those PCs, set them up, get them wired, powered, image loaded, tested. Think about the help desk support that this person has. This is a hot environment. How do you keep all those machines from overheating and failing? And more importantly, what about all the hard drives? Imagine how much data is on all these local drives. Take a look at this one, two, three. We can only count what we can see in the picture, but as you start to see it build, you get the, you get the feeling that this is just an overwhelming amount of hardware in this picture. When we got done compiling the number that we, what we pulled from this, um, this one location, we counted 57 PCs at eight analyst stations. That's seven PCs per person minimum. There may be more hidden that we don't know about. I venture to guess you're beginning to realize this is a bigger than extraordinary challenge. Well, I'm a visual person, but for those who think better with numbers, let's take a look at a few that, that also illustrate the problem. I happened to see a fairly recent presentation um, that as I was watching the presentation, I just kept the tally of all the numbers that the the presenter kept throwing out during the presentation. It was loaded with information about the users and the systems in the Department of De Defense and one or two branches. Uh, I'll just highlight a few that caught my mind. Four million network users just kind of blew me away. They've just put up the, the joint security stacks, 11 in the continental United States, two in Europe, two at CENTCOM and eight in PACCOM. They're really bringing those online now to help ensure the security of the systems. Seven plus million devices, computers and IT devices, and 15,000 networks. Um, I also found staggering was that the Army has 25,000 applications that they have to deal with. So to answer the question about how big this opportunity and the challenge is, you can clearly see that it is huge. So the challenge and opportunity for big improvements are massive. But the solution is the opposite of massive. It's compact. Here's what we're going to start talking about. Secure, stateless clients at the desktop. 
We face many challenges with our customers. We want to share a few of the use cases that illustrate the ways they, they have solved the problem. Each of these has a little bit of a different twist to it. And it and, but if you take a look at the, the slide as a whole, it attests to the flexibility of choice that you have in solving these problems. So as you start to take a look, or as we start to take you through these use cases, see if you can relate any of them to the environments that you are in. So now we're going to look at a few of the basics just to get started. The picture in the upper right-hand side is one that I showed you on slide four of the uh, workstation. Um, we're going to kind of roll around this slide. So what we see on this line drawing are we've got four networks coming into this one workstation. We've got four cables coming off of those networks connecting to four PCs. Off of the, each of the PCs, we've got a separate connection for the, the keyboard and the monitor, uh, a keyboard and the mouse, excuse me. And then we've got two connections for each display. So, you know, we've got uh, something like 128 linear feet of cable for every workstation. And remember, the order of magnitude for one of those air operations centers is huge multiplier of that. So the client cube presents an elegant alternative. We've still got the same four networks. We've still got four cables coming to the single client cube device, but we've got four zero clients embedded with this secure KVM. We've still um, got the two display cables for each of the four displays, but we've taken, so, so let's look at it this way. You have eight cables connecting four displays in both situations. But the difference is with the client cube, you only have to deal with seven external cables. All the internal zero client to secure KVM comes pre-assembled from the factory. The uh, prior solution with the four desktops has 16 cables that you have, that you personally or your IT guy has to uh, connect to make the solution work. So we're looking at about 60 feet less cable between the ugly and the elegant solution. So I just want to summarize this for you. Ugly is expensive to deploy, it's expensive to support, it's unsecure, it's energy inefficient, it's an ergonomic disaster, hot, loud, a nightmare to patch, susceptible to malware, prone to failure, and it has a short life cycle. Conversely, the elegant solution is easy to, to deploy, virtually support free, no OS, no memory, no moving parts, very energy efficient, quiet, no fan, no heat, failure, virtually failure proof with a long life cycle. So let us show you how this comes together. First, we take a unique package client cube 2, which contains a NIAF approved secure KVM. For information assurance officers, the switch has certifications for desktop operation at the highest levels with common criteria, protection profile, version 2.1, evaluation assurance levels 2 plus, and with peripheral sharing switch protection profile 2.1. So let's talk a little bit about what makes the secure KVM special and accepted by the information assurance community. The KVM ex itself is, is secure, so it's not the typical uh, commercially available KVM, and it has been specially modified. It has isolated port paths for video, audio, peripherals, and smart card readers that prevent data crosstalk. It's got unidirectional data paths. It's got display security, which, which means that the, uh, there's a protected display interface that prevents data leakage from monitor to monitor. And it's got end-to-end -end tamper protection design. You start to see how these clients get integrated into the client cube itself. So, a zero client comes in a variety of different configuration options. They could be copper-based, they could be fiber-based, they could have dual outputs, they have quad outputs, they could have a variety of number of USBs. Within the client cube, it matters not to us. So you could have fiber connections and copper connections both going into this device. So as you can see, by the time the fourth zero client gets there, it's replaced essentially four standalone PCs all the zero clients are connected to the secure KVM. So let's take a look at the back end, the network and domains. We've got four different networks, combinations of classified, unclassified, completely open, sensitive, but unsecured. Um, 
Each is connecting to its own zero client. We'll talk in a second about how elegantly this thing mounts underneath the desktop, but you also see we have, uh, when this is mounted underneath the desk, we have a desktop control unit or a DCU that allows you to switch between the multiple networks or domains, and it's a very small device that sits on the edge of the desktop. This is uh, essentially how, how this first use case works. The first use case, you just literally push one of the buttons like any traditional KVM, and you interact with dual display one of the networks. Push a different button, the two displays are taken over by the new network or the new application, push the third button, then the third uh, network is, is active. You, you don't have visibility to all four networks at once, and that's the distinguishing point about this particular uh, use case, and it's in places like uh, Cheyenne Mountain where the, a lot of the tasks are very singular. You're, uh, you've got one job to do, and that's the job you focus on when you're paying attention to it. The attributes for this use case that are um, important to recognize, because th this is what will change as we go through these use cases, is that the, the Client Cube 2, in this instance, is perfect for a tight desk space. It eliminates as many peripherals as possible. It delivers situational awareness. It, it, it's important, but it's not as critical. The multi-network situational awareness is not as critical as in some of the other use cases. It's tasked to network specific, it's highly secure, and there's very high data integrity because there's very little chance of making a mistake. You are interacting with one network, there's no chance that you can accidentally input data into a different system or on another network. So this gives you, this slide gives you a little bit of appreciation for all of the cabling that is done prior to receiving it um, on your dock. Um, push network one, and it'll switch over to the next network. So this next case is a slight twist on what we just showed you, and that four monitors are used instead of two. And each display shows whatever is happening on that domain. So you're basically getting persistent video. When you make a KVM selection, you interact directly with that screen. So if I push button one, my mouse and keyboard center on that display for my interactions with that domain or application. Another slight modification is one we call video cloning. So if you take a look at this picture here, um, what you have is you have four monitors that have constant video flowing to them. Those are the smaller monitors in the picture. The foreground monitor, which is currently labeled number two, is the one you actually have active um, interaction with. So in this particular case, what we're doing is we're, we're out of the two outputs on the KVM switch, we have cloned the video so that the video is going in two directions, one to the persistent monitor in the background and one to the active monitor. So as you switch from uh, network to network, you're basically switching those two. Now, why does anyone want to do this? Well, it's important for some operations to have what we call persistent view, and that means that they're just keeping an eye on what's going on. And they don't want to lose visibility on any of the video that's coming in through their networks. But they only want to interact with one network, or they only can interact with one network at a time. So the video cloning capability gives them that, uh, that capability. So here are some variations that we were talking about as you can start taking a look at some of the operating system environments. So this is a DISA headquarters uh, location, and um, and so far, what we've talked about is about the client separation and the network separation. So we have um, those two elements are done at the zero clients as they are integrated into the client cube. So think about it: each client cube has a, or yeah, each client cube has uh, a set of zero clients, and each zero client has a dedicated network path to the back end. Now, that back end could be many different uh, options. So, so, Richard? So, this next use case has, you'll, you'll notice here, it's four networks, four zero clients, four displays. You can in, the user interacts with four 
different networks at a time, and he also has visibility to all four networks at the same time. So the same situation we just showed you with the video cloning, but on the back end, we can have a combination. Uh, this example actually shows you a CIPRNET LAN with a combination of uh, R series blades and VMs, uh, VMware VMs. Um, that could be an R series uh, blade form factor from ClearCube. The next network is connected to blades only, no VMs. The next network we could say could be uh, have geospatial or heavy graphics uh, needs that could be connected to an A series blade from ClearCube. Uh, it could also be connected to an M series engineering workstation that may have one of the very expensive uh, applications. And in this situation, you could share that application without having to have multiple independent licenses for it. And then let's just say your open internet or your uh, your Office 365 or some of the cloud initiatives could be run purely on VMs, uh, and that gives you a great deal of flexibility with the back end of what connects into the uh, client queue. So one thing I'd like to do on this picture or on this um, graph right here, I'd like to point out one um, unique aspect of this. If you haven't used zero clients before, and it's illustrated in that top picture. When Richard was talking about that zero client connecting to the back end, he was referring to the ability to broker a connection through a switched network. What that allows you to do, a brokering capability allows you to do, is to pick your source that you want to connect to. So for instance, um, you may have some applications running on virtual machines, or you may have some applications, more, the more graphic applications, running on Blade PCs. Brokering through zero clients allows you to go uh, from the same desktop connection to either one of those sources. This is done, by the way, with VMware Horizon. So our next example introduces you uh, to another in the Client Cube family. So we were previously talking about Client Cube 2 product. We're now going to give you a, some use cases with a variation that we call the Client Cube KM. So let me point out the distinguishing feature. Whereas with the Client Cube 2, we've been discussing how the user selects and pushes a button on the KVM or DCU, which allows him to make his network selection. The KM, standing for keyboard and mouse, uses the display configuration coordinates to determine the network activation. Okay, so I'm going to try to try to illustrate what that means. What that means is when my mouse traverses across the boundary or mullion of the display panel, the next display surface coordinates indicate I've switched to that network. So this is a transparent movement of the mouse. And when you move on to the ne next network, audio and your keyboard follow it. So again, to elaborate a little bit more, these displays that are connected into the KM are not switched. So video output is constant to all displays. If you have space for a lot of displays, this configuration provides great situational awareness and a smooth multi-network interaction. We're going to illustrate this. Let's watch a two-minute video, and you'll see that not only does the network switch when you move your mouse, but you hear a click and you see smooth mouse movement to the next domain or application instantly. It really changes the levels of situational awareness and instantaneous responsiveness. I guess my only caveat on this is that because you have displays connected to each of those separate networks, you need a lot of space because if you're going to put four networks up, minimally you need four displays, not two as we did in the Client Cube 2. The other thing I'd like to point out in this, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's, let's launch the video. Okay. Thank you for taking two minutes to view this short video. We couldn't think of any better way to describe this exciting new level of situational awareness and responsiveness other than to show you. Our setup for this video will look familiar to many of you in the command and control and fusion center environments. We have four displays, each attached to a separate computing resource and a separate network. We can mix unclassified, classified, secret, and top secret network feeds 
and guaranteed hardware line of sight separation all the way back to the data center with our secure EAL 4 Plus certified Client Cube KM, the latest in a line of innovative Client Cube products. On the desktop, we have one keyboard and one mouse to interact with all the sources, and we have Client Cube KM housing four zero clients. This inset shows the very latest small form factor. It provides four zero clients in a six inch by ten inch footprint. Now let's see the Client Cube KM in action. Here are four displays, and we're going to have IBM Analyst Notebook running on four an Esri terrain mapping application on two, a custom tracking app on three, and a video streaming app on one, all receiving feeds from their own secure separated domains. Notice when the mouse crosses the boundary of the display you hear a click and that indicates that the client cube KM has just switched your interaction stance along with your mouse and keyboard to a new network application and display so you can interact with the live system instantly giving you full situational awareness and the ability to interpret and react instantly. No sharing of data is possible across the boundaries so secure stays secure without fail. It's truly a new ball game for the analyst or trader or anyone who has to be on the ball monitoring and responding to real-time information flows from multiple sources. It steps up the game in so many ways. There's more to show you, but I promised only two minutes of your time. So call the number on the screen or visit us online. Let us help you save money and up your game with the client QK. Okay, we've got you back. So, uh, would you go back to that slide previously? One of the things I'd like to point out as well in the setup of this uh, particular kind of configuration is that there is there are 40 pre-configurable display options already programmed into the switch, which means that you can set up your displays, and, and we're going to get into some really radical kind of configurations later on in this presentation toward the end. But you can set up your displays in a variety of different um, orientations, vertically, horizontally, uh, vertical and horizontal, portrait mode, landscape mode. There's, there's all sorts of different ways that you can orient the, uh, the displays when connecting to the KM. But um, remember that the way this operates is that it has to know the coordinates of where the edges are on those displays. There's the diagram I was talking about. So those are some of the templates that are already set up and they cover you know 99 percent of of uh, the, the typical kind of uses that most people are going to be using for these so I um, uh, wanted to point that out that uh, that there's a number of ways that you can set these up okay so so far we've talked a lot about client separation network domain separation back-end platform flexibility now we want to show you the next thing is a very popular use case and it's application separation and delivery using the KM. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here is an E911 call taking and dispatch operation. We've actually just done work for the Fire Department of New York and the Los Angeles Fire Department, Sheriff's Department and another, uh, a couple of others that have um, found this to be a very interesting way to deploy things. So each station has four primary applications, a dispatch application, a call taking application, some GIS or mapping application, and a CAD application. Um, each one has a different compute resource because each one of these applications vendors um, really assure operation in an independent environment. Sometimes these applications may not play friendly together, so in these mission critical environments, application separation is a no-brainer. If you can do it, you do it. Um, K, the KVM will, as you move your mouse from one application to the next, the KVM is right there with you. Audio uh, can move with you as well, or you can persist audio if you wanted to. There are other ways to handle that. 
So let's look at the back end of this. So in this case, we've got about 85 R-series blades in this back office. Um, uh, there's, you know, you can imagine how the call center environment is. Now we are, um, it's already a stress-filled environment, but now there are not four PCs, four fans, the heat being generated from those computers, all of that's gone and you've taken what is already a hectic environment and you've least made it as ergonomically friendly and productive as you possibly can uh, using these tools. So we're well over halfway through the presentation, so just a few more examples and then we'll be wrapping up for our questions and for a little surprise. The next user story is one uh, I can generalize about because it's in a classified environment. But this is a challenge that one of our customers gave us uh, in terms of combining two client cubes together. The, the functionality of the KVM version and the KM working together and supporting a single mouse and keyboard to be able to traverse um, a, a, a rather uh, highly visual environment. So, uh, Kind of what I'm describing here is that, we, and it's, it's a bit complicated, so please bear with me. In this picture, maybe a little bit hard to see, but we have two classified networks and one unclassified network. These are 30-inch displays that are, are illustrated in the picture. Two of those 30-inch displays are paired to serve as one very large display, and two of the other 30-inch displays are paired for another single very large display. This is accomplished by deploying two of our Quad Display Zero clients in the Client Cube KM, giving the senior operator a huge display surface. So you can imagine, uh, consider it almost like a video wall uh, type of approach. So he's, you know, if you take a look at how much resolution he's got, he's got 2560 by 1600 monitors or displays. And really, in essence, because he's got two of them, double the number. So it's 3200 by 5120 resolutions that are always feeding live information and interaction instantly with the mouse, uh, with the mouse placement. Each of these is connected to its own classified network. The fifth display is connected to a client cube KVM version and one classified network and, and the unclassified network. So there's actually two zero clients involved. This allows an observing trainee to switch between monitoring the classified network and switching to the unclassified network for other duties like access to reference materials or test materials or whatever. So extremely uh, challenging um, environment, but the, the cool thing is that uh, there are interfaces between the two client cubes that will allow us to link the single mouse and keyboard to allow the operation for uh, this particular customer uh, of the two client cubes to operate exactly the way they wanted them to. So uh, took a nasty problem and turned it into a very elegant solution. Now we're going to move to uh, even bigger visual areas. So we, we do have a lot of watch floor customers and in this particular case what, uh, what we're illustrating is the maxed out version, and we've got some pictures here to kind of show you in real real time, real world, how these kind of things get deployed. But in this particular case, we've got quad zero clients, so there's four displays, four um, connections, if you will, uh, per zero client to each of those layers of displays. So you can see green, red, yellow, and blue. Each of those represents uh, persistent video output from a separate network. And we have, um, and each of those displays are running at 1920 by 1200 resolution for constant overwatch of network activity. So a great, I mean, a great example of this would be a SCADA operation. So uh, anyone who is monitoring uh, manufacturing process control equipment, you can imagine utility companies have to do this. But uh, some of the ones that we found are, in, especially in the DOD area, are watch floor uh, environments where they've got video surveillance feeds coming in from numerous cameras, and uh, they've, they've also got uh, mapping applications where they're, they're coordinating uh, uh, you know, missions and, and 
a variety of different applications where they are filling a wall full of displays. Now we'll all let, let all that soak in for a minute and we'll show you a couple of other deployments. Here's an Air Force watch floor. And a typical missile defense agency workstation with four or five displays. So we, this is our last use case, so we're, we're just about done. Um, this is, let's, let's just look at it this way. With all the experimentation with cloud adoption, there comes a great deal of anxiety and concern about security. So this story demonstrates how this client cube family provides a safe, no-risk method to embrace the cloud with confidence. We're going to be looking at four networks, four zero clients, four displays. You have visibility into all four networks at the same time, and you can interact with any of the four networks if you're using the KM. So here we have two classified networks and a sensitive but unclassified network. Those could be connected to an M series, an A series, or an R series. And the fourth zero client is now connected to your cloud applications. It could be connected to your Office 365, to your email applications. You could have a DevOps connection coming off this one zero client. But the beauty of the whole deployment is that you never have to worry about your internal applications being cross-contaminated with anything that happens on that open internet side of the world. You could imagine the relief that of complying with all the cloud-centric initiatives, knowing that you're not going to compromise your internal mission-critical applications. So this is an interesting use case. And we're seeing a few more of these uh, as people are starting to catch on of the, with the freedom that this gives you. We've looked at about eight different use cases. We've gone through them at a very high level. So we wanted to summarize the common requirements. And it's going to be obvious to those of you who are here on this webinar um, because you've got to have some familiarity with this environment. The need for high security assurance. We've got the integrated CAC readers, the ability to support USB peripherals, absolute control over how those USBs are used, who uses them, when they use them, the need for low emissions, the need for security um, from a policy uh, compliance, and the need to protect every bit of your data. Keep it in the data center. Don't distribute any of it at all. The need to have more than uh, one network brought to the desktop at the same time, maybe with different access privileges or clearances. Multiple resolution displays, higher resolution video output, real-time situational awareness, limited physical space, low noise, no heat, um, power consumption constraints uh, with the government mandating a 40% uh, energy usage cut across the board. Zero clients and client cube are going to really help you achieve that goal. And the another thing that we don't really have a lot of time to talk about, but the zero client blade combination really changes um, the ability for a network administrator, uh, a very small staff to support a large number of people. So those are the common requirements. And I'm going to let Jim, you're going to take us through a couple of other, some of the other deployments. So. Uh, we mentioned SCADA before, but you can see from our pictures of the, the basic command and control environments that you see at utility companies, you see in large manufacturing operations. We've got simulation and training centers. Um, obviously, the geospatial analyst is a big player in a lot of the uh, DOD community. Uh, we've got the, the uh, unmanned vehicle pilots. Um, with a tremendous amount of visualization that they're doing, but also feeds from different networks that are coming into his location. You know, he's getting them on, he's getting from the classified side, he may be getting them from four different classified networks, getting information that he's trying to coordinate. Um, we've also got uh, more in the, again, we talked about simulation and training. Um, more in the commercial side, we have financial services. Uh, traders, for instance, will have a multitude of dedicated PCs. Uh, in this particular case, we've got a picture of one under the desk where there are four PCs under the person's desk. And you can imagine sitting in front of those four PCs, uh, again, how uncomfortable it is for that particular users. 
So financial analyst, uh, we talked about E911 or E911 dispatch centers. There are transportation, public safety, the intelligence community, and anything that requires any kind of physical security and, and surveillance uh, is a good candidate for these um, types of applications. I'd like to elaborate. Sometimes we get a question, so I'll, I'll kind of answer the question before it gets asked, about how the data is separated. That because uh, a zero client has no operating system and it has no memory and it has no storage, the actual data never transmits or never transfers to the endpoint. The data is separated in the network uh, operating centers just like they would normally be. So there's no change in your infrastructure from that perspective. What we would typically see is we typically see a rack of blade PCs mounted on one domain, a rack of PC, blade PCs routed, uh, racked on another domain, and maybe some virtual machines racked on another domain, and they are physically separated from each other. What What is uh, sent over the connection to the endpoint zero client is merely pixel changes. So it's just visual output. There's no data. So I wanted to point that out. That's how we get these accepted by the information assurance communities. And we'll show you the penetration and the acceptance uh, a little bit later on how many of uh, uh, these client cubes are uh, populated in a variety of different uh, agencies, DOD locations, and, um, and secure locations. We've got four more slides, and then we'll be done. The next one I wanted to show you is uh, we talked about how elegant the mounting uh, apparatus was for this client cube, so I wanted to show you how that works. So here I've got a front view of the client cube and a rear view, so you can uh, get, get a feel for it. Underneath the desk, uh, attached with six screws, there's this little apparatus that has a rod that uh, is suspended slightly. From that, um, there's a channel in the back of the client cube, uh, and that rod slips into that channel, that bracket there, and it is secured right at the very back with a single screw. And then there are uh, buckles on the side that latch the client cube in place, keeping it secure. Uh, and it's a perfect setup. You don't, in this picture, we show it sort of close to the front of the desk, but you could mount it all the way to the back of the desk and use the DCU to bring the controller up to the front. And we see these in some very tight, cramped spaces where uh, no other solution really would, would uh, get it done. Yeah, imagine shipboard locations where every inch counts. Uh, this is one option that a lot of our customers have opted for. Exactly. This one is one I just wanted to show because um, it, it surprised us so much when a customer brought it to our attention. A little something extra is what uh, I, I call this one. So when you receive a regular desktop PC, it arrives at the dock and it has a lot of boxes. They're arriving at different times, resulting in almost a full-time job of uh, logistics job the receiving burdens, the time required to open and inventory all the assets, the storage space required, and the waste and disposal. I mean, we're talking about lots of space, lots of time, lots of service costs. Whereas the client cube includes one to four zero clients and the secure KVM in one box, pre-configured to order with cabling, replacing those four desktop PCs at fully configured weighs only 32 pounds. One defense customer savings in shipping costs alone almost paid for the entire acquisition, and that just blew us away. We wrap up with giving you just a kind of a overall feel of the whole family, the Client Cube 2 with the KVM, uh, the fiber dual display, the fiber quad display, copper display, those configurations can be mixed, the Client Cube KM, the DCU, and we've just introduced some new zero clients that has six USB ports and an integrated CAC reader. Um, so that's, a, that's, a, that's the family as it is now, and uh, we're real excited to be talking to you about it today. So client cubes uh, have been deployed in a number of uh, locations. Some of them are um, overseas, some of them are um, CONUS, but um, it, it's typically addressing one of those eight use cases, and uh, we're hoping that 
what we provided you as far as flexibility of configuration uh, will kind of get your imagination spurred. Think about the problems that you have and think about how you can solve them using one of the eight different configuration options. Uh, Jim, you want to take us out? We, we will be looking forward to some questions. We've already got a couple of questions that we can see. Um, Jim. Yeah, we're, please give us a call if you have any questions. We have salespeople who are very versed in all of this uh, information for you. They can answer your questions, configure a variety of different options for you. Uh, we are um, here uh, in Austin, Texas is where we're headquartered, but we have sales offices around uh, different locations. Please reach out to Kerasoft. We have a, a team there that's also versed in the product as well. There's also, uh, we have some limited number of evaluation equipment uh, available as well. So for those of you who are uh, have some serious short-term interest and uh, want to try this out, uh, again, please let us know. Uh, don't have a lot of them uh, because as you, you know, as you start getting into uh, evaluations, uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that we handhold you, make sure you get the proper attention. So uh, contact us if you have any short-term uh, needs. Okay. We're going to um, open up to, to some questions. If uh, you'll type those questions into the Q&A pod, uh, we'll see them and we'll pick them up. We've got uh, one here that uh, is someone who is asking, Specifically, what does the client cube connect to most of the time? So to reiterate, this is a zero client based product. So that means that we are going to be connecting to physical PCs, blade PCs, to the client cube or to VMware virtual desktop machines. Um, so it's a variety of both. We get, we get quite a mix of both. Uh, and that connection is done through VMware Horizon uh, to the virtual machine and to the Blade PC. Right. Thank you. Uh, 45, we're coming up on 45 minutes. Um, uh, we'll give it a minute or two for any other questions. If uh, there are questions that don't get answered, um, please go ahead and submit them anyway, and Shannon will see that we get those questions answered. Um, I think we're probably, uh, whenever you're ready, Shannon, I guess we can go to the polling questions. Uh, it's up to you. We hand you the floor back. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.